Good morning everyone. Today we will study chapter 3 Synthetic Fibers and Plastics. In this chapter we will study what are synthetic fibers and characteristics of different types of synthetic fibers. We will see why synthetic fibers are so popular. We will also study different types of plastics and characteristics of plastics and how excessive use of plastics leads to pollution and then lastly we will study about disposal of plastic waste and conservation action so let's start the chapter as in this chapter we will study about synthetic fibers so first we need to understand what are fibers fibers are very thin hair like strands which are twisted together to make yarns and then yarns they are woven or knitted into fabrics so fabrics they are made up of fibers okay and the fabrics they are cut and stitched to make clothes so after understanding what are fibers now the next turn is about types of fiber there are two types of fibers natural fibers and synthetic fibers Natural fiber means the fibers which are obtained from plants and animals. Okay. For example, cotton, jute, these are plant fibers whereas silk, wool, etc. are animal fibers. So, now after understanding the natural fibers, next is what are synthetic fibers? Synthetic fibers, they are called man-made fibers or artificial fibers. Synthetic fibers, they are made from chemicals which are derived mainly from petroleum. Okay, so the synthetic fibers are man-made fibers. They are made from chemicals. Chemicals obtained from coal and wood, they are also used to make synthetic fibers. In this chapter, we will study various types of synthetic fibers like rayon, nylon, polyester, etc. What is polymer? Synthetic fibers are made up of long chains of repeating units called polymer. Poly means many, mer means parts. So polymer means many parts. In the polymer, each of the smaller units is called monomer. So let's try to understand these terms polymer and monomer in detail with the help of these uh, diagrams. Here you can see this is a necklace. It has been made using small blue beads which have been joined together with the help of a thread. So here we can see clearly that many uh, same blue beads they have been joined together so as to make a necklace. So this necklace here is polymer and the blue bead is monomer because the same blue beads they have been joined together with the help of the thread so as to make a necklace here necklace is polymer and small blue bead is poly uh, monomer okay and the another example is of this uh, of these uh, paper clips these paper clips they have been joined together so as to form a long chain of paper clips here this long chain of paper clips is polymer but a single paper clip is monomer okay so the polymers they are the long chain of repeating units and these repeating units known as monomer for example ethene is the monomer of polythene and the monomers they combine by a process of polymerization to form polymers that means polymerization is the process by which monomers combine to form polymers. I hope now monomers and polymers are clear. Now we will study various types of synthetic fibers in detail. First we will start with rayon. Rayon is prepared from cellulose obtained from wood pulp. Cellulose is a natural polymer. Okay, cellulose is made up of a large number of glucose unit. So the glucose units here are a monomer and the cellulose is polymer. Okay, if we talk about the characteristics of rayon, it has silk like appearance. Okay, it is shiny like silk but it is cheaper than silk. Because it has been obtained from the cellulose, so it has, uh, it has some characteristics similar to cotton. 
how it is obtained wood pulp it is first treated with the chemicals like it is treated with sodium hydroxide and then carbon disulfide to obtain a thick syrupy liquid called viscose then this viscose solution is forced to pass through a instrument having the tiny holes when this viscose solution passes through the tiny holes of this instruments fine fibers are produced then these fine fibers are uh, uh, treated with the chemicals and then we get the lustrous fibers of rayon as i told you rayon is cheaper than silk okay but it has shine like silk rayon is mixed with the cotton or woolen fibers to make blended fibers what are these blended fibers blended fiber means when any synthetic fiber is mixed with natural fibers so as to form a new type of fiber this is known as blended fiber okay why is it why is it done because the blended fibers they are made you with the help of the natural fibers means in the blended fiber there is a content of natural fibers also so the blended fibers they are soft and comfortable okay if we talk about the uses of the rayon it is used as a fabric for clothing since it is soft comfortable and absorbent like cotton and it is lustrous like silk so the rayon it is uh, dyed in various colors so as to make various beautiful clothes rayon is mixed with the cotton okay so as to make bed sheets rayon is also mixed with wool to make carpets okay if we talk about rayon it is a semi synthetic fiber why i am saying semi synthetic fiber because it is made with the help of wood pulp okay wood pulp is a natural source but because wood pulp is treated with the chemicals so as to obtain rayon fibers so that's why it is semi synthetic fiber next is nylon nylon was the first synthetic fiber that was made completely from the chemicals okay and these chemicals were derived from coal along with water and air okay so the nylon was the first fully synthetic fiber if we talk about the characteristics of nylon nylon has very good uh, characteristics like it is strong it is light in weight it's lustrous means it's shiny it is elastic and wrinkle free and easy to wash so after understanding these so many so many good characteristics of nylon now let us see some uses of nylon nylon fiber it is used for making ropes tire cords fishing nets and parachute fibers tire cords means a uh, rubber a rubber ring that is placed around the rim of the wheel okay nylon fiber is very strong it is uh, nylon fiber it is even stronger than a steel wire of comparable size so therefore the ropes that are made from nylon they can be they are used for mountain ring it is used for making socks stockings and combat uniforms because of its strength and elastic nature because nylon is a light in weight it is wrinkle resistant and it dries quickly so it is also used to make garments and swimming wear also here in this picture you can see these are the various articles that are made use that are made from nylon like cro ropes parachute fibers and this toothbrush socks etc okay next is polyester polyester is another type of synthetic fiber it is made from the chemicals that are derived from petroleum terrelin decron and terrain are some polyester fibers polyester fibers are strong do not wrinkle retain their crease absorb very little water and dry quickly the very beautiful thing about polyester is that polyester doesn't wrinkle easily okay it is strong it doesn't wrinkle easily it absorbs very less water because of which it dry quickly okay so polyester it is made up of monomer ester esters are the organic substances which have fruit like smell and the polyester it is blended with cotton to produce polycot and it is mixed with wool so as to produce poly wool okay 
and terylene it is blended with cotton which is known as terricot p e t p e t is a very popular type of polyester it is used for making bottles jars etc p e t means polyethylene terephthalate okay poly like nylon this polyester it can also be drawn into very thin fibers which are woven into clothes so let us see some uses of polyester polyester is used for making sarees dress materials bed sheets curtains etc because it doesn't shrink or wrinkle and the polyester fibers are durable and they can be worn or washed frequently durable means anything which can be used for long time without any damage that means the polyester fibers are long lasting fire hoses and conveyor belt are made from polyester since they are lightweight and compact polyester is also used to make lightweight sails which are resistant to sea salts means uh, means which do not get damaged by the sea salts it is also used for making jackets water resistant garments and carpets next is acrylic acrylic is also a type of synthetic fiber it has properties similar to wool in the winter season we use sweaters shawls carpets blankets etc okay but all the sweaters shawls and these woolen clothes they are not made from the natural wool they are also made from the uh, synthetic fiber called acrylic acrylic is cheaper than wool and it can be dyed into a variety of colors okay so as i told you uh, why we started inventing the synthetic fibers because natural fibers are quite expensive but the synthetic fibers are relatively cheap okay so acrylic it is used for making sweaters shawls carpets and blankets and the fabrics used for making umbrella it contains of millions of tiny holes which allow air to flow uh, flow freely through it but the fabric it doesn't allow uv rays to pass through it if we talk about the characteristics of synthetic fibers synthetic synthetic fibers are strong light durable easy to wash and moth proof that means synthetic fibers are light in weight strong long lasting they are easy to wash and moth proof means they do not get attacked by the moth or molds molds means fungus synthetic fibers they do not absorb water or moisture because the synthetic fibers they absorb very less amount of moisture or water so they dry quickly they do not shrink or wrinkle but these fibers catch fire easily this is the biggest disadvantage of synthetic fibers synthetic fibers catch fire easily and these fibers melt on heating if any person wearing synthetic fiber catches fire so what will happen the synthetic fire will start will melt and the and it will stick to the body of the person wearing it which can be very disastrous so this is the biggest disadvantage of the synthetic fibers that these fibers catch fire easily so that's why it is recommended that we should not wear synthetic clothes while working in the kitchen or in laboratory these fibers are non biodegradable and cause soil pollution non biodegradable means something which cannot be decomposed by natural processes okay so these fibers are non biodegradable and cause soil pollutions next is plastics after understanding synthetic fibers now we will see plastics plastics are polymers in which the monomers are arranged in a linear manner or they may be cross linked here this is the linear arrangement of monomers and here this is the cross linked arrangement of monomers okay let us see various types of plastics plastics are of two types thermoplastics and thermosettings thermoplastics the plastics which uh, which can be softened on heating and molded repeatedly into desirable shapes thermoplastics become soft on heating because of which they can be molded again and again into the different shapes they bend easily on applying pressure and get deformed on heating because these types of plastics uh, 
becomes soft and heating so it can be molded into various shapes again and again because why is it so because they are made up of long chain polymers with no cross linking okay in the thermoplastics the monomers they are arranged in the linear manner there is no cross linking of the monomers so because of which they can be molded into various shapes again and again if we talk about examples examples are polythene and pvc pvc means polyvinyl chloride next is thermosetting plastics they can be molded into shape only once and cannot be softened or melted on heating this type of plastics once it has been set into one kind of shape after that it will not melt on heating and cannot be molded into another shape okay why because these polymers they get highly cross linked when heated in the thermosetting plastics the monomers are arranged in cross linking manner and on heating the polymers they get highly cross linked okay so this is the reason they cannot be molded into another shape once it has been molded into one type of shape if we talk about the example examples are bakelite and melamine bakelite is a poor conductor of heat and electricity so it is used for making plugs switches and other electrical fittings fountain pen bodies etc melamine is a it is fire resistant and it can tolerate more heat as compared to other type of plastics so it is used for making unbreakable dinner sets decorative items flame flame resistant coating on the uniforms of firemen now we will see characteristics of plastics plastics are light in weight strong durable means long lasting and easy to handle okay so they can be molded into any desirable shape and size and can be colored so they are used for making various household articles like furniture storage jars bottles etc they are poor conductors of heat and electricity so they are used as covering on the electrical wires they are used for making switches plugs sockets etc plastics do not corrode do not rust or react with the chemicals so it is used for storing various kinds of food items also plastics can be made on a large scale and some types of plastics can be recycled plastics are waterproof and airtight and are used to uh, store several solid and liquid food items like chips biscuits etc now we will see that how excessive use of the plastic it leads to pollution plastics cause serious environmental and health problems because plastics are non biodegradable non biodegradable means which cannot be decomposed by natural processes if we talk about the cotton clothes they decompose in about 2 to 5 months whereas woolen clothes they take about a year time to decompose okay but the plastics materials they take several years to decompose so because of which the plastic waste it keeps piling up okay because it do not decompose by the natural processes so the careless and the irresponsible way of disposal of plastic it chocks the drains and blocks the soil okay it blocks the drains it blocks the soil which results in the reduction of percolation of water percolation of water means penetration of water into the soil next is plastic bags they are swallowed by cows while feeding on garbage while feeding on garbage cows they unknowingly they swallow plastic bags also which choke their respiratory system means block their respiratory system which leads to their death next is burning of plastic is a slow process and it releases a lot of poisonous gases into the atmosphere so we saw that how excessive use of the plastics it is leading to various types of pollution now there is need to dispose plastic waste very carefully because we saw that excessive use of the plastics it is leading to pollution okay so now we will see that how what are the how or what are the steps uh, for the proper disposal of plastic number 1 is segregating biodegradable and non biodegradable waste Se segregating means separating 
biodegradable and non biodegradable waste and then dispose them accordingly okay next is disposing plastic waste in the proper places they should not be thrown in the in the sewage system or on the roads or on the streets next is reducing the amount of plastic used with the recycled paper bags or cotton bags or metal containers etc next good op option is recycling and reusing plastics the plastic is collected sorted melted and remolded next is incineration or burning of plastics at very high temperature which reduces the volume of waste and provides useful supply of heat energy and also break down the polluting gases produced during the reaction okay so these were the some methods for the proper disposal of plastic waste this was all about the chapter thank you